All right, I'm excited to bring you this series. This is the series on MIDI controllers. Uh, so a MIDI controller is the hardware element, your little hardware buddy in your uh, Ableton Live setup. The MIDI controller can help you compose music um, in a faster way than trying to mess around with the keyboard or having to use the mouse. It, there are many different kinds, and we'll go into the different kinds that are available, but I decided to use this Novation Launch Key Mini because it has all the different um, aspects of what I feel like makes a good MIDI controller for Ableton. Um, in addition to being able to help you compose your music, uh, a good controller also should give you the capability to, to perform your music live on stage and you know get your eyes away from the screen a little more. Um, so we're going to get into how to set up a MIDI controller and how to get live to recognize it. Um, the, one of the most commonly asked questions is how do I get, I got this thing, how do I get it to work? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to demonstrate. Um, what I got right now is uh, a MIDI controller that has a USB mini output right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. It'll focus. Oh, yep. All right. Um, and here's a, you basically, you have to get the right cable. That's the first thing. So whatever uh, controller you get, most of the time will ship with the cable unless you got it used, you know. So here's my little USB tip. I'm going to stick it into my USB port. Boink. And let's watch the blinking lights. Ready? Here we go. Boom. So now we have our MIDI controller plugged in. And as you can see, I have the first track armed in Ableton. Um, it's ready to go. should be ready to receive information from the keyboard. But unfortunately, for some reason, I'm playing the keyboard, but I'm not seeing anything. So how do you overcome this problem? Well, it's just as simple as going into Ableton's menu under preferences. Now, if you'll notice something, something happens when I plug this uh, controller in. Uh, Ableton has recognized it. You can see here at the top, in this area, under the control surface, right there, the control surface section, the launch key mini has inserted itself. <laughs> and now here in the MIDI ports, we've noticed that this has appeared. In fact, here, I'm going to unplug this controller. And as you can see, it disappears. So I'm going to plug it back in. And let's let's focus on just this right here. Input, launch key MIDI, LK mini MIDI. <laughs> I try to say that three times fast. So Ableton interprets messages coming from these controllers by arming these little switches here. I can't play anything off of this MIDI controller unless Ableton is receiving this information. Um, this is useful. The reason that this exists is because maybe you have a complex MIDI setup and you need all these different controllers to come in here and, uh, and have different jobs. This way they don't interrupt each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the track control. See it says track right here? Track. And I'm not going to turn on the remote switch yet, but I'm going to turn on the track control for the input. What this means is that now all these tracks are going to receive MIDI information, as long as it's a MIDI track, from the keyboard. So now I should be able to... Isn't that nice? Now I can play any track that's armed in Ableton with my controller. If it's not armed, I obviously don't get any control. I have to make sure that the track is armed. Another way that I can do this is I can, this monitor section right here, see what this monitor? Um, there's three different options here. Auto, what this means is that if this button is clicked on right here, the, uh, the arm session button, I can play. If I turn it off, I can't. If I click the in switch, regardless of whether this is armed or not, I'm still going to be able to play this instrument. So that's important to know if you're running into trouble as well. Okay, so the next section, let's go back to our preferences screen. In the next section, we have remote. So think of it this way. The MIDI controller can do its musical functions if I have the input of its MIDI input with the track switch switched on. With the remote switch, this is how I can control aspects of Ableton with the controller. So if I turn the remote switch on, now I should be able to map controls to Ableton. Um, there's going to be a whole section on MIDI mapping, but I'm just going to show you this right away so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to click 
the MIDI button, and I'm going to map a control to the play, and map a control to the stop. Okay, so that's play, and that's stop. Now, if I go back to my preferences and I turn the remote switch off, when I push those keys, I get nothing. It's really important to know, it's really important to understand this, that the remote switch controls aspects that are mappable. The whole mapping screen relies on that remote switch being turned on, okay? And so if you have it turned off, it's not going to work. Furthermore, something that's, that's even... Uh, greater about about what's what's going on right now is we have a controller that has a MIDI control script built inside of the controller. Inside of Ableton there's let's take a look at this menu. Right here these control surfaces are available to select with this drop down menu, okay? Some controllers don't have control scripts, other ones do. It doesn't mean now it's important to understand this. It, you don't have to have a control surface or a control script within Live to use a MIDI controller with Ableton, but these add functionality to the controller as well as visual feedback that's really useful. So it's good to find a controller that has a control script that works with Ableton Live. So we're going to explore why, what they did with this controller specifically to make this control script work with Ableton. First of all, if it's not turned on, Notice how the visual feedback goes away. I'm going to go down here and find my launch key mini. And boom, there's our controls. So what do these controls do? Well, it looks like if you look at my screen right now, I've got a couple of these tracks ready to play. And so these are the clips, which I can launch. And when they're playing, all of a sudden underneath of them, it looks like... I can stop each one. I can launch them individually. Now, what I've noticed about these is that these buttons can start the whole scene or stop the whole scene. And then these buttons over here can navigate through my set, through, those, through the scenes themselves. I'm pushing down or up. So that's nice. I can go to the second section and play it. Go back to the first one, play it, stop the first one, go down to the second, play it. All right. So, control scripts also do some things for the other parts. Check this out. In this first MIDI track, you see this little hand right here? The remote control icon. This icon indicates that one or more of your MIDI control services are currently controlling the parameters of the device. This instrument is inside an instrument rack, which has eight macro controls right here. It just so happens that the Novation Launch Key Mini also has eight knobs at the top. Because of the control script, I can take these knobs and move them, and if you'll look, I'm going to move this first knob, I can control the brightness of this voice. So let me arm this voice. tone, color, reverb amount, attack, release, the noise amount, and the overall volume. All of these controls were mapped to this instrument rack, and due to the control script, I can control them from this controller. So if I had multiple tracks lined up, I could select them, and these knobs would jump to that track and be able to record that. That's the advantage of having a control script working with these controllers. Okay, so that's the basic rundown. Um, the next video we're gonna I'm gonna show you all the different styles of MIDI controllers that are available and how to set them up.